I'm Edward Moorfield, publisher of City Business. I'm honored today to be interviewing Alec Ross, the author of The Industries of the Future. The world's last trillion dollar industry was created out of computer code. The world's next trillion dollar industry is going to be created out of genetic code. All of our bodies are made up with about 25,000 genes. We're now about 15 years past the human genome project, the mapping of the first human genome. And we are finally at the point where we can develop uh, some of the kinds of precision medicines and diagnostic tools, drawing content out of those 25,000 genes uh, to help us live longer and healthier lives. And the person who I've learned more from about this than anybody is somebody who I first met on the racquetball court. Dr. Bert Vogelstein. At first I thought that Dr. Vogelstein was just a gym rat. He's got this sort of crazy gray hair, you know, sweat band, wears a knee brace on the outside of his 1970s style gray sweatpants, brings his racquetball gear to the court in an old Samsonite suitcase. Guess what? Dr. Vogelstein is, is about the world's most cited living scientist. It was his team among others who determined how mutations in proteins cause cancer decades ago. Kind of a big deal. And the innovation that Dr. Vogelstein's team uh, has unleashed, which I think really gives us a glimpse into the potential of genomics, is this thing called a liquid biopsy. Now when I go to the doctor every year, you know, I'll get blood drawn and they'll tell me what my cholesterol level is. Uh, with that same vial of blood, what Dr. Vogelstein's researchers can do is detect cancer cells at one one hundredth the size of what can be detected by an MRI. Meaning, instead of finding cancers that are in stage three and stage four, when they're very difficult to cure and where a person has become symptomatic, they can find it when there's just a trace of cancerous cells before somebody's even feeling badly, early in stage one, when it is very curable. I think that, th that when things like the liquid biopsy become mainstreamed, it can add three to five years of projected life expectancy. Uh, and so I think that this is a, this is a wonderful thing um, that can make us live longer, healthier lives. Now I do think that this will initially help people who are wealthy and Western, and it will have to trickle down over time to people who are middle class or lower income or non-Western. But I do think that the kinds of things that are being created in the labs in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, oftentimes from re researchers at Johns Hopkins University, are going to make the medicine that we are practicing today look primitive by comparison. One of the other things coming out of Johns Hopkins that absolutely made my hair stand on end was looking at how we can draw information uh, out of our genetic material and enable us to develop designer drugs to combat our illnesses. And one of, the, one of the examples that most struck me was by a Hopkins researcher named Luis Diaz, who started a company called Personal, Ge Personal Ge Genome Diagnostics, PGDX. And what in essence they do is they have got these enormously powerful sequencing ma uh, machines churning away uh, on the waterfront in East Baltimore. And when you have cancer, you can send them a sample of your non-cancerous cells and of your cancerous cells. And what they will do is they will identify the specific protein that is malfunctioning. And with that information about the specific malfunctioning protein, you can then one, identify whether there is already a drug that exists that can be used to inhibit or repair that protein, or B, you know, figure out what is closest to it. And so instead of just blasting everybody with radiation, instead of just you know, everybody being subjected to chemotherapy and hoping for the best, what this does is it brings a level of science. It brings a level of genetic precision to fighting cancer that doesn't presently exist. I, I view the commercialization of genomics like it's 1994 in the internet. You know, I think that we are, it's sort of chapter one, page one. We're very early in the creation of what I think will be a trillion dollar industry. 
I'm quite optimistic for the United States. I don't, I don't think the United States is perfectly positioned, but what we have are the research institutions. We have the place where the, the research that will drive the creation of this industry, uh, we, have, we have its home here in the United States. And foremost among them is Johns Hopkins University. You know, I, when I think about how a former logging capital in the Pacific Northwest became home to Amazon and Microsoft. And when I think about how, you know, formal home of, you know, apricots, prunes, and plums became Silicon Valley. You know, it's not difficult for me to imagine Baltimore, Maryland going from being, you know, sort of an industrial center, you know, a place whose industry, you know, you think of mapping more closely to the 1950s, I could very, very, very easily imagine it becoming the center of the creation of a trillion dollar industry in the 2020s. Um, it's all a product of its world changing researchers and then making sure that the city where these research institutions exist uh, are, you know, sort of comfortable, happy headquarters for the researchers, much as, say, Palo Alto was. Uh, for Stanford and, and the creation of, of the dot-coms that came off of that campus.